from WRAL News, this is Focal Point. North Carolina's urban areas are growing and prospering. It doesn't take much to see where the large companies are going, at least in North Carolina. You know, Charlotte, Greensboro, Raleigh, those folks are going to get theirs all the time. But what about the other North Carolina? When the factories left, they left us holding the bag. Textile and furniture plants have closed in dozens of rural communities. It makes you wonder, what's next? How am I going to live? What am I going to do? We don't have any jobs here the way it is. And now this one's shutting down. As opportunities disappear, so do people. I can only tell you as a teacher and a parent that I didn't want my children to stay here. Unemployment offices in many rural counties are filled with older workers. My age, you put in an application, they look at that and say, well, he's to the age now, he ain't gonna be here long. Many unemployed factory workers never graduated from high school. One of the comments I hear most often is, you know, you can't even flip a hamburger at McDonald's without a GED or a high school diploma. Even a GED and a community college degree won't guarantee a job. We are good workers, but it's no jobs. Many rural counties are desperately trying to create them. Jobs is getting to be scarce around here. North Carolina has grown by nearly 800,000 people since 2000, but the populations of a dozen rural counties have actually declined during that time. The industries that used to provide the jobs are disappearing. Young people are leaving, unemployment and poverty rates are high, and economic developers are searching for answers. It's a North Carolina far different from the one most of us see. It was honest work. You did eight hours work for eight hours pay. J.D. and Nancy Biggs liked working at the Ethan Allen Furniture Plant in Spruce Pines. I said, we've got a job here for a long time. It didn't work out that way. The plant closed in November 2006, putting Biggs and nearly 350 other people out of work. It's tough to look at the plant knowing that you worked here, gave them five years of your life, and then all of a sudden you're kicked out the door. It's tough. The Bigs have been kicked out the door before, out of the Mahasco textile mill in Burnsville after putting in 10 years, and out of the OMC plant there after putting in 20. They felt fortunate to find jobs at Ethan Allen. We was just getting back on our feet pretty good, halfway decent. Then Ethan Allen closed. It's hard for you to keep your sanity about you when you get booted out the door of three different plants. It's really tough on any family. Okay, boy, get your coat. Let's go get the tractor. We the Biggs have to care there. for her mother and two grandchildren on a government check that's about half their old Ethan Allen pay. Taken from others. So in their mid-50s, J.D. and Nancy went back to school. J.D. hadn't been to school since 10th grade when he dropped out to help support his family. I just had to get my brain to work in, to go into school instead of going to work. Uh, it's hard to do after 41 years, but believe me, if you want to, you can do that. What's my cost function? Nancy has a high school diploma. Everything has changed so much. It was just like having to start over. Long ease. G-R-E-S. Greens. Greens, you got it. Nancy and J.D. have to start where Gary Shook is today. Next to the picture. So in a basic skills and GED class at Mayland Community College in Spruce Pine. Cook and <coughs> Gary struggled with dyslexia in grade school. Me and two more boys, they set us over in the corner and called us the three students. He quit school in the seventh grade. The teacher basically told me that I wasn't learning, I'd just as well as quit. So I did. Gary worked in various jobs before landing at Broyhill Furniture in Lenore. He worked there 32 years until it shut down in 2004. He found work at Ethan Allen and suffered the same fate as the Biggs. You don't know which way to turn. I mean, I worked all my life, I like to work, but if you can't find something. Well. Work is even harder to find without an education. As far as being able to fill out an application, something like that, I, I couldn't spell 
make a lot of the words out, spelling I couldn't fill it out. It is mm -hmm. in the uh, But at 61 years old, Gary Shook has finally learned to read. Good job, Gary. Great. Yes. Used to, my wife couldn't leave me a note when she left home. And now she can leave me a note. I can go in and read it. What is the impact of the mathematics that we do? School was a new challenge for students like Gary, and they were a new challenge for the college's staff. They were certainly overrun by this huge number of older population of people who weren't interested in the collegiate life, they were interested in survival. We want the money coming in to be more than the cost going out. And they discovered how much times have changed since they entered the workforce decades ago. And in those days and times, an education wasn't that important. You could get a job in manufacturing. You didn't need to know how to read. You could write and sign your name on your paycheck, and that was it. Local officials say plant closings have cost this community 2,500 jobs. The problems are complicated. We have in recruiting an industry back after we have lost one third of our manufacturing base. Do it again with just another tube. The solution starts with education. At Mayland and other community colleges, federal funding covers tuition for laid off workers. We have to build our workforce. And you can't build a workforce if people don't have high school diplomas. If I sell one of these things, Nancy is hoping her nursing certificate will help her find a job caring for the elderly. We're going to look at the ballistics of the bullet. We're going to look at the size of the hole. We're going J.D. To hopes his criminal justice degree will get him a job as a juvenile probation officer. I don't want to be stuck where I'm going to get kicked out again. Because that, that boot gets pretty hard on your man's backside when he's going out that door. Coming up, Mitchell County finds new hope in a new idea and a coastal county searches for new answers too. It's sad to think that our, our, our children have to move away to make a living. And there's a lot of them moving away, a lot of them. You're watching Focal Point from WRAL News. Most of the rural counties that have lost people since the year 2000 are in Eastern North Carolina. Fishing and farming have always been the region's economic foundations, but those industries aren't providing the jobs they used to, and people there are searching for new economic opportunities. It's been a good business, but it ain't no more. Claudia Cahoon's been fishing for 30 years, but her business has been battered by hurricanes and cheap foreign imports. They can bring it in here so much cheaper than we can produce it. Since 1994, nearly half of the county's largest fish houses have disappeared. The next place is, is the only other fish house left down here. So have four of its five crab processors. Most of your fishermen have had to go find other jobs. I went from like 40 fishermen down to five. You know. Many of them found jobs at the new prison. Claudia did too. High County has no job opportunities, you know, except the local prison, you know, that, that fishermen can do. Because fishermen are not trained to do a lot except fish. All of my, my co workers at the prison are fishermen too, you know. With all my fishermen out there, I didn't need to be here. Claudia's seafood operation is just a part-time job for her now, and she's put it up for sale. I love this business. It's, it's, uh, I've always loved it, and I'll always love it. But right now, it seems like the thing to do. Hyde County's rich soil still produces a lot of cotton, corn, and soybeans, just not a lot of farmers. Many have sold their land to other farmers who just farm it with more equipment not more labor. I can foresee today that 10 people could farm all the land in Hyde County with the equipment that we've got available today. About the only way farming and fishing can create new jobs is by creating new products from the crops and the catch, like selling soybean oil instead of just soybeans and crab cakes instead of just crab meat. Farmers are also looking to alternative crops like organics, biofuels, and fruits. I see specialty crops being the thing that Hyde County is probably going to move to. 
With its remote location, absence of four-lane highways, or even a stoplight, economic development here is a challenge. Hurricane Isabel made it even tougher. In Swan Quarter, we lost close to 20 businesses. 20, right here in this little town. But the town has rebuilt. Some people who left are returning. And some say tourism is the key to Hyde County's revival. There's so much potential with paddling trails and canoes and just many, many recreational um, activities that you can do here. Lake Madame Mesquite could attract much of that activity, especially with the state's planned renovation of its old lodge. But what about East and North Carolina counties without such attractions? It's really a cultural issue. Philip uh, Horn, vice chairman of the Foundation for Renewal of Eastern North Carolina, says diversity and innovation are the answer. The foundation has branded the region as the inner banks and sees a new economy in tourism, healthcare, biotech, and alternative agriculture. But Horn says the area's natural assets must be protected. In other words, if we create just another sprawl community, then we're making this unique place into anywhere USA. I hate to see our waterfront completely be developed. I'd like to see it remain a commercial fishing village. There was a time when, when this boathouse was full of boats. Claudia Cahoon agrees that some things here should stay the same, just not the economy. I feel like Hyde County has to have a little change or we're just going to keep on going down. We've got to have some kind of change. Next, rural counties in the Piedmont are struggling too. Who would have thought even two years ago that, that I would be sitting here with no job today. You're watching Focal Point from WRAL News. Some of the counties losing jobs and people are relatively close to thriving urban areas. They have more advantages than the more remote rural counties, yet face many of the same challenges as they try to build new economies. Miss that store too. I really miss the store. Jenny Watkins worked at the Haynes Hosiery Mill in Rockingham for 26 years. You got to understand. Her friend Devon for 10, but the mill closed in September 2007. I used to love it here. If I, if I could come back now, I'd come back right back today. <laughs> Me too. If I could come back now. Yep, sure, yep, I love yep. my job. They never finished high school. Now they can't find work. Everything's calling for, for a GED. GED. So Jenny and Yvonne are working to get their GED at the Richmond County Literacy Council. Let me check that one. It's like Y equal to N and X equal to whatever, you know. What it's, saying, this is totally new to us. It breaks my heart deeply because I realize that um, those people, how are they going to survive? This is no jobs in Richmond County for us, even though we are going to school trying to get our GEDs. The local employment office is trying to help 1,600 people find work, but they have only 25 job openings. And we try to tell them right up front, you know, there's not a lot of jobs here. The economic conditions are, are sluggish. And we try to get them to look at other surrounding counties. But there aren't many opportunities there either, especially for people with little education. It's heartbreaking. It really is to not only to have to explain that there aren't any more jobs like the ones you just had, you're also going to have to make some serious life changes in order to be qualified to get back in the market. The ruins of the old market line Rockingham's Mill Road. About 7,000 people used to work in the mills here. That business is gone and unfortunately it probably won't come back. So the county is trying to lure new business. A lot of these companies naturally want to go around where there are universities and where there are metropolitan areas. Richmond County is touting the interchange of new interstates 73 and 74, its close proximity to other interstates, its rail service and vacant land. We're all fighting for the same little piece of pie. I mean, every rural uh, county in this country is trying to do the same thing we're trying to do. So $1,000 is your answer. 
Trying to educate the workforce is a priority. If we don't have a skilled workforce and a competitive workforce, we're not going to be able to attract industry, high-tech industry, which is what we need. Hopefully we'll have something else here soon. BCC, Blind Carbon Copy. Jeffrey Evans is a teacher at Warren County High School. She doesn't think enough parents here are encouraging their kids to go to college. Because a lot of the parents themselves don't have a college education and don't understand the value of that college education because they were fine working in, in the mills and the factories. But the furniture factories and textile mills are gone leaving few opportunities here for kids who don't go off to college. There are no jobs here other than minimum wage jobs. Jeffrey's daughter Kara left Warren County to study nursing at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. She loves the area. The emphasis on arts and culture and stuff and also just lots of social opportunities, interesting things to do. Hi Miss Barrett, Hi. my name is Kara. Which is why she has no plans to return to Warren County. I didn't expect her to. Uh, I was happy, even though I miss her and would love to see her more. Um, she's living her dream. Kara says Warren County just doesn't offer much for young people to do. A lot of my high school friends have gone off to college and, you know, are saying that they probably won't go back. This land on the left over here is available. An aging population is just one challenge John Church faces as he tries to encourage economic development in one of the poorest counties in the state. The education system in Warren County has had a lot of problems in the past, but we're addressing those problems. Well, what you gotta do by the PCD. There's also been the problem of negative publicity surrounding the county's old PCB landfill, its failed Seoul City Urban Development Project and its lawsuit against CVS after the drugstore chain changed its mind about locating a distribution center in the county. I think the county in the past has felt like that it, it's really been uh, put upon uh, in a lot of cases. We plan on developing this front portion of the site, which is 130 acres. The county is marketing its large shovel-ready industrial sites and land around its three I-85 interchanges but Church knows it must look beyond traditional industries. We are still trying to attract industrial jobs. We, we know that the buffalo hunt's probably over. The buffalo hunt's changed, it's not a buffalo anymore. It's a hunt for people wanting vacation or retirement homes along Lake Gaston. Over half the tax base in Warren County is uh, on Lake Gaston. And it's a hunt for tourists to visit the lake and a newly revitalized downtown Warrington. From 05 to 06, tourism spending in Warren County increased by 8.7 percent. I hope it grows a little bit more just so the people of Warrington, the people who live there, will be able to see more and be able to do more, but still keep that small town feel of everyone knowing each other when they walk down the streets and that kind of thing. Next, turning lemons into lemonade in Mitchell County. Sometimes when you wait for someone else to do it for you, that's never going to happen. To learn more about the issues covered in this episode of Focal Point, visit WRAL.com, click on News, and then Documentaries. North Carolina is one of the fastest growing states in the nation. It also has one of the highest poverty rates. And that means there are still a lot of people in our state being left behind while the rest of the state prospers. In those communities, the trick to getting out from under the rubble of the old economy and joining the new one may simply be imagination. The top, you'll notice just a regular piece of pine that I've slabbed off. Jim Buchanan worked at the Henredon Furniture Plant in Spruce Pine for 25 years. They closed the plant down, went overseas. When they closed, it was just total devastation for us and continues to be. And the problem that we continue to have is we can't attract industry back here. So this community decided to create its own industry. After all, it's home to the Penland School of Crafts and hundreds of artists and craftsmen. And we decided that we were going to be innovative and we were going to create something that could never be outsourced to China or to Mexico. 
That Something is Local Crafts, made by local artists, based on an award-winning children's book by local author Gloria Houston called The Year of the Perfect Christmas Tree. It's us, it's who we are, it's our people making their own handmade products that's not going to China or Mexico. Huge response from customers when they come in with these plates. The project is called Home of the Perfect Christmas Tree. About 60 local artists and craftsmen, many of them former factory workers, have started their own home businesses, supplying products for a retail store in downtown Spruce Pine. The products include everything from furniture to Christmas ornaments. The United States does about a $12 billion a year industry with China in terms of Christmas ornaments. We just want a billion of it. Folks here say it's something any struggling rural community can do. There's something in their community that is inherently them. It's who they are. It's not what the big company brought in and then took away. It's who they are. It's what makes them special. The home of the perfect Christmas tree sales grew 129% in its second year. It may not create 2,500 jobs, but it's created hope. Hope for people like Jim Buchanan, who not only sells his furniture at the retail store, but has started selling it on his own website. I'm by no means you know, rolling in the money and making big money, but it helped me get started. He is happy to finally be working again. Uh -huh.